Hey guys and welcome back. So today we're talking about high availability Zabbix configuration and this is not going to be a video about how you can configure HA with a PCS Curus Sync or Keep Alive D or any other HA utilities that we are used to with the previous versions. Right now we're talking about 6.0 and Zabbix 6.0 LTS also added a new functionality uh, high availability cluster which is a native one so no need for third-party utilities tools extensive linux configuration whatsoever everything is native available out of the box and first of all like why do you even need a high availability well it's just one of the ways how you can eliminate single point of failure right so if let's say the zabbix server crashes and you don't have an ha that's it your monitoring is stopped you are not able to um, continue the monitoring but if you have high availability and sort of doesn't matter is it a native one or is it uh, with a pcs and uh, current sync you, you do have a failover nodes so basically the zavik server crashes but your monitoring continues just because the second node or the third node takes place and uh, you might might have a question like what's the difference between um the good old one pcs and current sync way and uh, the native one um, basically there's no difference both of them are high availability both both of them are doing their job the only thing is let's say that PCS Curacing is probably more uh, flexible so you can do more stuff with it but it is also more complicated if you're using a native uh, Zabbix high availability it's extremely easy configuration will take probably less than 10 minutes including all the explanation of the parameters and uh, there's no need to maintain or manage it make sure that it runs or stuff like that everything is very simple so you will see and let's start the configuration so what we have here is the zabbix 6.0 um, i should probably upgrade the minor version so it's still 00 and uh, i do have some hosts here uh, one is uh, my windows machine which we're running right now and the second one is uh, just virtual machine uh 101 ip address it is the same machine where this front end and the zabbix server is running i also have installed the same oracle linux 8 this one is also oracle linux uh oracle linux 8 machine um empty i don't even have a zabbix repository added here and we will be using this as um as a second node for our high availability setup so if we right now go let's say on your zabbix 6.0 instance go to the monitoring dashboards you will see the system information widget and high availability cluster disabled same is also visible in the reports uh system information high availability cluster disabled so this purely standalone installation and right now we can proceed with a high availability configuration and get it up and running in no time so we need a cli and uh, in a cli what we need first of all we need an edit uh, Zabbix server configuration file and we need to basically add just uh, two parameters that's it no need to install any third-party tools dependencies whatever just uh, vi at c zabbix zabbix server.conf go right to the bottom of the config file and you will find high availability cluster parameters and yep there are just two of them ha node name and node address so node name well basically both of them are mandatory for your high availability cluster to work and uh, first one is node name you can um you can write whatever you want here this will be just used as a name representation but this parameter is mandatory and also node name between your all of your nodes must be unique so if let's say call this uh, zabbix node one then on the second node here uh, eventually when we'll be doing configuration we cannot use the same name so we will have to use let's say zabbix node two and uh, node address uh, also not uh, like this i will leave it uh, commented and uh, just add a new line and node address in my case is i can just write it down from the tab here 192.168.56.101 and a default listening port of the zabbix server 10051 so um that's it just write and quit save the file but probably this requires a little bit of explanation so node um node name kind of straightforward but why do we need to specify node address so 
it is already uh, the same uh, virtual machine where our Zabbix server is running. Why do we need to specify the node address? And this requires like a bit of knowledge how it actually this HA stuff in a native 6.0 works. Um, all the information goes through the database. So in the database, there is a table which is responsible for HA um, status, let's say it like that. And each node writes its information to the database table uh, with, uh, first of all, the status, is it uh, active or is it uh, standby or, um, or unreachable? We'll talk about all the states later. And uh, the IP address is required because think about like we have a front end and the front end also has to connect to the Zabbix server, right? First of all, to see this, that the Zabbix server is running, uh, to see administra the, yeah, administration queue. This page also is gathered from the server, so not everything in the front end comes from the database. There also must be connection to the server. And uh, how can front end know uh, to which server from our cluster, node one and node two, should it connect? which one is active. So this information is also gathered from the database. And in the database, we can see the IP address to which the front end should actually connect uh, when let's say node two is active and when node one is active. So this is where, where this is used. And uh, yeah, we did the configuration, right? Added the node name and added IP address. That's it. Next thing we need to do is systemctl restart Zabbix server. Yes, we're on Zabbix server 6.0, but we still have to restart the service if we made a change in the config file. So systemctl restart Zabbix server, and right away we will see um, difference in our frontend. Uh, we can go the same monitoring dashboards as in the beginning, and there we go, the high availability cluster is enabled and a failover uh, delay one minute. Again, we'll talk about this a little bit later. Uh, we can also go to the reports and system information and see the same information that high availability is enabled. And we have one node active right now, active and running. It is the one where our, our Zabbix server was installed. The last taxes, basically the heartbeat from a node and IP address and a port. So uh, what else do we want to keep in mind? Uh, getting back to the front end, if you just installed a fresh Zabbix 6.0, don't need to worry about it. If you are upgrading from a previous versions, let's say 5.0, 5.2, 5.4, you need to edit Etsy Zabbix web and zabbixconf.php file because here from previous versions, we have these two parameters, Zabbix server localhost and Zabbix server port. And this basically, uh, you see, I have commented them out and this is what you also should do. Uh, if you're upgrading, they're not commented out. And as a result, everything that goes in the database in terms of IP address from your high availability cluster is simply ignored and it is overwritten by these parameters. So if you don't comment them out, uh, doesn't matter um, if the failover will happen to the second node, the front end will still try to connect to the first one, which is not good. So if you're upgrading, make sure that these parameters are commented out. Okay, um, what's next? We need to add a second node, right? Uh, there we go, we have one node, we need to add a second one. And here we have a second machine and I don't have anything here. So we basically need to uh, install Zabbix server. We don't need a front end. The high availability is not about the front end. It is only about the server in this case. So click in a download Zabbix packages 6.0, uh, Oracle Linux 8, MySQL, Apache, whatever, just uh, copy paste the line uh, to add a repository. And then we can just type yum install Zabbix server mysql that's only thing that we need to install on our second node um, no need to install the front end um, I know, database or, or agent or whatever else just the server and uh, this will take i know matter of uh, probably seconds to install it and then uh, come on Verifying complete. So we have a Zabbix server installed. It is not running. We don't have a database. We don't have a front end. 
on this machine, we have Zabbix server, front end, database, agent, everything. Everything is installed here. So again, we need to do configuration of our Zabbix server conf. And of course, we need to configure like uh, the same HA node name, and I will do it right away. Uh, so copy paste parameter, I will call this node two. remember, the names must be unique. And for the node address, I will use again IP address from um, tab name 192.168.56.102. And this is 101. But this is not it. So we also need to configure database configure database parameters, right? Remember, so uh, DB host is not a local host, we don't have a database here on this virtual machine, it is running here. So what we need to do is again, uh, add a new parameter DB host and delete the local host part and fill in uh, 56.101 IP address of the machine where your database is running and make sure that your user, um, <clears throat> that Zabbix user from this virtual machine is able to access the database on a second one. So when you were creating the database user, uh, grant all privilege on Zabbix, blah, 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 at either you created or local host, or at, I think I've actually have it at local host. So we will have to, um, we can even create a new user. So my SQL, um, let me check what were the commands. I don't even remember it. Yes. Yeah, so here's the command create user Zabbix at localhost. I will just copy paste it. And you see we have here at localhost. And it means that I can connect to the database with this user only from a local host, not from my second node. So we need to fix it. And I will copy, copy paste it. I will create a new user called uh, Zabbix2. And instead of localhost, we need to specify the IP address of the machine from which we're actually going to be connecting, uh, change the password if required. So query OK, then we need to grant all privileges on our Zabbix database. So again, copy paste at don't forget about IP address 5168.56.102. And the uh, user is Zabbix2. There we go. So this part is done. And now we need to again, edit uh, the config file of the Zabbix server on our second node, we already have IP address of our database, DB name is Zabbix, that is true, DB user is uh, Zabbix2. Remember, we just created it. And DB password, as usual, in all the demo installations is just Zabbix. That's it. So yeah, let's check once again. Yeah, in the bottom, we have the node address. And node name is Zabbix node two. That's it. And basically, that's it. Basically, we need to start. I hope it works. Uh, System CTL start uh, Zabbix server. And the Zabbix server is started. We can check the log file. Zabbix server log and we see that only the high availability manager node uh, manager process is started. Node two started in the standby mode. So this is one of a uh, few uh, ways how you can check the current status of the node is just check amount of the running processes and you see there's just one uh, Zabbix server HA manager. And if we would go to the front end and refresh right now, there we go, we have two nodes, uh, one is active, one is standby, and they both are sending the uh, heartbeat. So every, I think, five seconds. And uh, yeah, that, that's the way how we know that uh, the node is uh, reachable, right. And if we go again, back to the documentation, here, you see that we also have a new runtime commands managing HA clusters. So with the commands, this is the way how we manage it. Uh, first of all, HA status, and uh, we can go here and uh, how do that runtime commands, which means Zabbix server minus capital R for runtime command, and HA status. This is information about our occurring nodes. This is the ID, um, just uh, order number or whatever, name, IP address, status, last taxes. We can remove the node if we decided that, okay, this one standby node is um, 
I don't know, decommissioned so we can remove it and uh, run the com command HA remove node. And I think you need to use this one. So number one, not the ID, but I may be wrong. Um, and a set failover delay. So default one was one minute. And what does this mean? So what could happen? We could have a situation when this node one crashes. We clearly see that the node is dead. Zabbix HA manager notices that and the failover happens to the second node. But we could also have a situation when the node is up and running, but for some reason connection to the database is down. And uh, this is a case when node could become unreachable when uh, this last taxes the heartbeat is not available, not updated in the database for the time period threshold set as this failover delay. So by default, if the network to the database is down, uh, then after one minute, uh, this active node will become unreachable, not standby, not active, unreachable. And the second one will take its place being an active node. That's it. That's all the configuration part of the native high availability uh, inside the Zabbix. And the last part that you need to keep in mind is, okay, how can I connect my agents to high availability cluster in a Zabbix? So basically you need to edit a Zabbix, sorry, agent config file. And uh, we have a server parameter, this one, right? And uh, remember server parameter means IP address from which we will actually accept a connections uh, from which Zabbix servers we're going to accept the connections. So this is pretty simple. You just list both or three or four or five nodes of your Zabbix server clusters that you have uh, 192, 168, 56, 101, and same with 102. That's it. Now, doesn't matter which node is going to be active, either 102 or 101, the agent will accept connections from it. And for the server active here, <clears throat> You see, there's also an examples for uh, high availability. You need to use a semicolon, not a comma, a semicolon in between. And that's it. So again, I will change the local host to 192.168.56.101, not a comma, semicolon, and a second node, 56.102. That's it. That's all the configuration to make your agents work with uh, high availability cluster of your Zabbix. And... Uh, that's it for the video. That's how you can configure native high availability. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment, press a like, subscribe as usually, and see you in the next videos. Uh, goodbye, and thank you for watching.